ideal type. The concept of the ideal type comes to us from Max Weber. It's an important part of his views on sociological methods, and it's also important in understanding his contributions to sociological theory. To explain this, let's use an example. If I imagine this blue blob as reality and this green framework as our scientific understanding of reality, it immediately strikes us that they don't match up perfectly. Our understanding of the real world doesn't match perfectly the real world as it really is. Max Weber says that in order to overcome this difference between understanding and reality, we begin by developing ideal types. To illustrate how this works, let's look at something we're all familiar with, the concept of the family. Now when I say or write family, all of us know what that means, but all of us have different ideas about what a family really is, based on our experiences, our values, our beliefs, and so on and so forth. If we imagine the blue family here as reality, families as they really are, and the green as our understanding or our definition of family, we can see where the ideal type begins to work in scientific methodology. What Weber says we need to do is look at as many different families as possible, as many examples of families as we can, and in all of those examples find characteristics that as many families as possible all share. We take those characteristics and put them together and create our definition of what a family is. And this is what an ideal type is. It is an example, it is a definition, that's based off observation that tries to include as many real families as possible. Now we recognize that probably no family will ever fit the ideal type perfectly, but this still creates a tool that helps us study and evaluate and examine families. And because we have this ideal type to start with, we can then improve our knowledge through research and observation until hopefully our knowledge matches reality perfectly. Let's look at this in a slightly different way by focusing on sociological theories a little bit. In order to really understand this, we have to keep in mind what Max Weber and other classical theorists were looking at. They were primarily concerned with social changes that they observed all around them in Europe. Um, things like modernization, rationalization, and other changes to society. To illustrate where we're going with this, let's take a slight detour and do kind of a silly example. Um, if we imagine red here and orange here, we imagine the most perfect ideal color red and the most perfect ideal color orange. We can look around then in the world and see things that look red and things that look orange, but we may realize that no thing is ever perfectly red or perfectly orange. Everything that has these, that exists in this color spectrum exists somewhere along this line. Some things are more orange and some things are more red, but nothing's ever perfectly one way or the other. Now this is just an example with silly colors, but it explains how Weber looked at bureaucracy and how he used ideal type, the concept of the ideal type, to understand bureaucracy and more importantly to understand social change. So Weber looked around and he saw these changes and he saw new kinds of institutions developing and from them he developed this concept of the bureaucracy and by doing so it allowed him to look at how societies changed and moved along this spectrum and became more rational, more bureaucratic, more modern. Let's end with a definition. An ideal type is a pure concept constructed by focusing on certain characteristics of social objects, even when those characteristics don't occur perfectly in reality. It's an emphasis on key features of a thing in order to discover essential characteristics of all things of that particular type. Thanks for watching.